This free AI model is blowing my mind right now. And honestly, it beats a lot of expensive tools like Nano Banana and Sea Dream. I'm talking about Quen Image Edit 2509. Today I'm showing you how to do virtual try-ons, swap any clothing onto characters with crazy accuracy, add multiple people together, rotate them to different angles, and even use Control Net for full pose control. And the best part, it actually listens to your prompts. No weird results, just clean, consistent outputs. If you're creating content for e-commerce, fashion, or AI influencers, you need to see this. Hit subscribe because I've got more tutorials coming on this model. All the workflows and links are in the description. Let's dive in. Let's dive into the incredible capabilities of Quen Image Edit 2509 by starting with a simple workflow and a virtual try-on example. Now, if you're new here and wondering what Comfy UI is, let me quickly explain. Comfy UI is a powerful node-based interface for running AI image generation models. Think of it like a visual programming environment where you connect different nodes together to create workflows. We use it because it gives us incredible flexibility and control over every step of the image generation process, something you just can't get with simpler interfaces. If you want to learn more about Comfy UI and master it from scratch, check out my earlier tutorials on the channel or visit my website pixelailabs.com where you'll find comprehensive courses on Comfy UI and even step-by-step -step guides to create your first AI influencer from the ground up. All right. Now before we get started with Quen Image Edit, there's one crucial step you absolutely need to take. Update Comfy UI to the latest version. This is really important because if you don't, the custom nodes in this workflow simply won't work and will run into problems right away. All right, let's take a look at our models group. For this tutorial, I'm using the Quen Image Edit FP8 version. If you're running a graphics card with plenty of VRAM, like a 3090, 4090, or the newer 5090, this version will work perfectly for you without any issues. However, if you're working with a more modest setup with around 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM, don't worry, you're not left out. You can use a quantized version of the model instead. The Q4 or Q5 versions work exceptionally well for lower VRAM configurations. The second model you'll need is the Quen Clip model. I'm using the FP8 scaled version here as well, but just like before, there are quantized GGUF models available that work great for GPUs with lower VRAM, so you've got options depending on your hardware. Another key model we're going to use is Quen Image Lightning version 2. Now, this is a game changer because it allows you to generate really high quality images in just 8 steps. That means faster generation times without sacrificing quality, which is exactly what we want. You'll find all the resources, including the workflows I'm showing you today, in the link down in the description below. Make sure to grab those. Now that we've got our models sorted out, let's move to the input images. For this virtual try-on example, we'll need a medium shot of a person. The image I'm using here is actually an AI influencer I created using our Photoreal Influencer Blueprint course. The second input image is this football jersey that we want to transfer onto our character. Here's how it works. Our input images are connected to the text encode Quen Image Edit Plus node, which supports up to three input images. This is where you'll add your text prompt. Now I've learned something important about Quen Image Edit through testing. You need to provide small, precise, positive prompts that get straight to the point. No need for elaborate descriptions. For example, for this virtual try-on, our prompt is simply, change the woman's shirt to the pink shirt. That's it. Short and direct works best. The negative prompt is where we include keywords that help reduce or avoid certain image issues like blur, distortion, unwanted text, or watermarks. Think of it as telling the model what we don't want to see in the final result. Moving on to image dimensions, you'll need to choose between a vertical or landscape orientation. I find that 832 by 1216 works really well with this model, especially for character shots. However, you can also use a square format like 1024 by 1024 if that suits your project better. In the K-Sampler, I've tested quite a few different samplers, including Euler, Hune, and many others. What I've found is that LCM works particularly well with the Lightning LoRa. 
it's much faster and generates good quality images with slightly more details than other samplers. Of course, you're free to experiment with other samplers and schedulers if you want to see what works best for your specific use case. Now, as you can see here, our AI character is wearing the exact jersey we provided in our input image. Notice how well the shirt fits our character. The logos are spot on, the texture has transferred beautifully, and everything looks natural. But here's a pro tip. To get the absolute best quality possible, I'm going to update the input image with a higher resolution version that has more detailed information about the jersey. I'll then generate a new image using the same seed number to keep things consistent. Look at that! It's immediately obvious that this version is much better and more accurate than the previous one. When we compare the two images side by side, you can really see that the quality of your input image matters significantly. Higher quality input equals higher quality output. Keep this in mind for your own projects. Now that we've successfully dressed our AI character in the football jersey, let me show you how to take this further by adding another character and then in a separate pass, changing the background. This is where things get really interesting. For the second generation pass, we're going to use our previously generated image as image 1. Then we'll load a new image and connect it as image 2 to the text encode Quen image edit plus node. Here's the prompt that works really well for adding characters. Make the person in image 1 taking a selfie with the person in image 2. What's brilliant about this specific prompt is that it won't mess with character consistency. It preserves facial features much more efficiently than trying to describe both characters from scratch. As you can see in the result, both characters are clearly present and their features remain intact. Now, using this same chaining technique, we can change the background. In this example, I'm going to change the background to a stadium tunnel. This approach will preserve our characters while only modifying the environment around them. This is exactly why I use this chain generation technique. It gives us much more control over the image output. I don't recommend trying to do too many changes in a single prompt. Break it down into steps and you'll get much better, more predictable results. Let's move to another virtual try-on example, and this time we'll tackle something a bit more advanced. We're going to target a garment that's already being worn by a model in a reference image, transfer it to our AI character, show you how to rotate the character to different angles, and also demonstrate how to use control net images to control the pose. Lots to cover, so let's get into it. In the positive prompt, keeping things simple as usual, we're writing, changing the woman's bikini to the red dress. When we generate the image, you can see that we've preserved our character's identity, her pose, and the background, but now she's wearing the red dress from input image 2. It's a clean transfer. Now, here's something really useful I found. There's this Reddit post with helpful commands that you can add to your positive prompt. For example, if you want to view from the backside perspective, you'll want to write it in Chinese instead of English. I know that sounds unusual. But the model was trained primarily on Chinese text, so it understands these directional commands much better in Chinese. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to unbypass the additional generation node and paste the command for back view in Chinese into the positive prompt, then generate. There we go. This gives us the back view perspective of our character, exactly as we wanted. Same thing for a side perspective. We put the command in Chinese instead of English, We've got a perfect side view. The point is, you can do a lot with these perspective commands. You can zoom out, tilt the character's head, rotate them to different angles. This is incredibly useful for e-commerce applications or for fashion content creators who want to showcase a garment on a model from different angles and perspectives. Your customers want to see products from all sides, and this makes that super easy. Now let's explore how to use ControlNet, specifically Open Pose, to control the pose of our character with precision. This is where you get really granular control. All you need to do is load an Open Pose key point image into the Image 2 slot. Then, in your positive prompt, write, change the pose to the key point pose in Image 2. That's all there is to it. Generate the image and watch what happens. Look at that. Our character is now making the exact pose shown in image 2. 
This model is genuinely amazing at following control net images accurately. You're getting studio level pose control without needing an actual photo shoot. Just like with Virtual Try On, you can add any item or accessory to your character. The process is straightforward. Use an image of the object you want in Input Image 2, and in your positive prompt, mention that the character is holding that object. For example, I might write, the character is holding the red bag in her arm. As you can see, after generating the image, the woman is now holding the exact same red bag from Input Image 2. This is genuinely impressive, and honestly, I really love this model. The accuracy and consistency are just fantastic. With Quen Image Edit 2509, the possibilities are truly extensive. You can get really creative and produce some stunning images. Let me show you one more example that demonstrates the power of combining different techniques. In this example, I used a depth map image from a reference photo that shows a sports car with a woman posing next to it. I fed our generated character image into the image 1 input and the depth map as image 2. The positive prompt I used was, generate an image with the girl in image 1 standing next to a sports car. The result was absolutely stunning. We got everything right. The background, the pose, and the character consistency all maintained perfectly. The depth information guided the composition while our character retained all her features. This model is truly amazing, and in my opinion, it outperforms a lot of closed source models like Nano Banana and Sea Dream in many aspects, especially when it comes to consistency and following instructions accurately. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that it gave you a solid foundation to start creating with Quen Image Edit 2509. I'm planning to create more tutorial videos about this model, diving deeper into advanced techniques and specific use cases, so be sure to hit that like button if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.